geeks, freaks, and all those unique, this is MC Frodus, and if music be the food of love, play on. In this episode of Strange New Worlds, we're introduced to Cadet Nyota Uhura, and this is an introduction 56 years of the making. If you go ahead and check out my video for the announcement of Uhura's casting, this is what really excited me about her. Despite knowing this character since 1966, I don't think we ever really knew Uhura. Thinking about it, I think we had more background for Morn on Deep Space Nine than we did Uhura, and as someone who thinks Nichelle Nichols did an incredible job with what little she was given, this is an absolute travesty. Some of this was corrected in the Kelvinder series, where Uhura did get more development, but it's still understated. In this, the second episode of Strange New Worlds, we get more information on Neota Uhura before the credits than in everything that came before it. Not only do we get a backstory for this character that's been missing for decades, but we see the development of her dynamic with Spock. If you didn't think this dive was going to be about Spahura, hey, welcome to the channel. This is obviously your first time here. But it goes past the fact that they're my babies and I need them to smush faces. The character thread of this episode is Uhura's ambivalence about being in Starfleet, and that's reflected by her dynamic with Spock. When Uhura and Spock interact personally for the first time, Uhura's already feeling out of her depth. She's been wrong-footed by Ortegas' hazing, and she doesn't really know how to fit in with the crew, as we see her uncomfortably milling around. But it's with Uhura's interaction with Hemmer and Spock that we establish where Uhura's headspace is, but also get a hint of where she'll go. When she realizes that they're also hazing her, Ahura is feeling like she's truly made a mistake coming onto the Enterprise, and she takes it out on them, telling them off in Andori and Vulcan. Ironically, by feeling that uncertainty and allowing her irritation to come out, she manages to impress these two hard-to-impress men. Ahura shows off not only her skill, but she's talking back to the chief engineer and chief science officer. Uhura is afraid of no one, even if she's uncertain about her place within Starfleet. She's able to show off who she really is. This interaction puts her a bit more at ease, and she's able to open up in front of the crew about her skills when asked by Pike. When her incredible Omniglot abilities are revealed, everyone is dead quiet, because she's just that impressive. When Uhura reveals her long overdue backstory, we get a look at a different kind of Starfleet cadet. Starfleet's treated with a near cult-like reverence in most Star Trek characters. Even Uhura in later, earlier versions. But this is now Uhura who is still discovering herself, and it's okay for a character to have not left the womb wanting to explore strange new worlds. I think it's also important to talk about Uhura's backstory and why it was done this way. It continues the theme of grief we saw in last week's episode. Uhura went to Starfleet because of the grief of losing her family. While I didn't mention it in the last dive, La'an's backstory is also one of loss and grief. It would not surprise me at all if a majority of the main cast is dealing with some sort of grief. I'm already getting a strong found family vibe from them, and grief is a powerful tool to unite them together. That connection and grief and not knowing your place is something that unites Spock and Uhura together, as we see a shot of Spock immediately after Uhura speaks about it. I think that this is what makes him walk along with her after dinner. When Spock does offer some comfort to her in a way that only Spock can be by stating plainly how Pike feels about bald honesty, but I think it's also interesting that right away Uhura can tell there's a but coming in Spock's conversation. Even this early on, she does understand him in a way that few others do. And Spock sets up Uhura's character conflict plainly because he's emblematic of that conflict. She's not sure she belongs in Starfleet, but Spock fully represents a commitment to Starfleet. But as an aside, Spock is either lying about his ambitions and he chose Starfleet out of spite, as seen in the Kelvin timeline. Spock lying is always a possibility, no matter how much he lies about Vulcan honesty. Or Sarek had absolutely no idea what path Spock wanted to follow growing up. Which makes Michael's rejection from the VEG all the more heartbreaking, as Sarek sacrificed her career's dreams in order to fill one for Spock that he never wanted. I tell you. I kind of hope it's the second one, because that's the kind of family drama I expect from the House of Solgar. But Spock's confrontation with Uhura, while well-natured despite its brutal honesty, is just that. It's 
brutal. While Uhura might have briefly felt like she was a part of the team, what Spock says put her back on the outside and makes her wonder if she's actually made the right choice in her life's path going into Starfleet. He gives voice to her uncertainty, whether or not she's meant for this role, and if she's just taking up space for someone who's more deserving. In the mission briefing, Uhura doesn't say a word, and that speaks volumes. She's just so over her head. Meanwhile, the others are just volleying off one another, to the point that Pike and Kirk are even flirting with one another. But those doubts are so deep-seated in her now, and she's going out on a mission that has the potential to be cataclysmic. Now I have thoughts on the scene with Chapel. I'm going to tuck most of that aside because I'm sure I'll have a deep dive into her soon enough. But what I'm going to focus on is Uhura's reaction to Chapel and just, um, Uhura's not having it. She clearly doesn't like that the only person Chapel warns that the procedure is going to hurt is Spock. And she's only doing that to flirt, which, um, choices. I think it's a mix of Uhura thinking Chapel's an ass, but also not really being here for someone flirting with Spock. This whole episode really focuses on setting up a rapport with Spock and Uhura, and Chapel does act as an interloper, being totally at ease with flirting with Spock. It again makes Uhura feel alienated. Once down on the comet, there is one person who makes Uhura feel better about herself, and that is Sam Kirk. Just as she's starting to get her sense of self-confidence back up, she's left in a perilous situation, her only cheerleader dying on the ground and forced to work with the very person who has been giving voice to her self-doubts. This is the crux of the episode. As tough as Spock has been, it has always been in service of making Uhura a better officer. Because he's right, being in Starfleet is a serious and dangerous career. It's not something that should be gone into on a whim. Spock has also seen Uhura's strength in that scene with him and Hemmer. He's pushing her so that she'll do the job that she needs to do. On that comet, she is the only person that has a chance of being able to decipher how to speak to the comet. This scene with Spock and Uhura really starts the shift in their dynamic. While Spock and Uhura do again bond over some more absolute candor, they still have some difficulty communicating with each other, with Uhura being a bit spicy when it comes to Chapel's interactions with Spock. I don't know if she's bringing it up as an actual joke, or if she's testing out Spock's interest, or if it's just been bothering her since it happened. Maybe it's all three. I think her calling it a joke is more trying to deflect, and Spock just doesn't get it. But once we get past this conversation, there's a shift. When Uhura and Spock speak again, they're on a better footing. Spock, bless his little green heart, tries to give Uhura a pep talk in a way that only Spock can. And the Uhura that Spock saw at the party is able to come out. When he shows a small bit of vulnerability, Uhura is able to match him, get some of that confidence that we saw before. And now, Uhura voices her doubts. We see how much what Spock said to her cut her deeply, and he realizes it. He didn't before. And I think Uhura needed to get that out in order to move forward. And Spock needed to hear it in order to realize what effect his words had on her. For as much as Spock's words can cut, so also can they lift up. Uhura has already impressed Spock, and he needs to let her know that. He's not coddling her. He's just laying out the situation. But there are many types of truths. And the truths Spock said before were brutal. And now the same truth can bolster Uhura up. And just as Uhura finds the proper resonance to speak to the comet, these two find the proper resonance to speak to one another. You could not telegraph it anymore unless you had them sing in harmony. Oh, wait. Thank you, creators, for not making us wait for Uhura singing. And using it in this context is uniting these two characters together. They're on the same wavelength now. When all is said and done at the end of the episode, Uhura has found some sense of belonging on the Enterprise. She has made it through her first landing party, and the only reason it was successful was because of her. Which Spock lets her know, and it's this that makes Uhura know she's on the right path. Uhura doesn't need proof of her abilities. She knows her abilities. She always knew her abilities, even if she had a small moment of doubt. What she needed was a connection. The entire endeavor gives her a connection to Spock. Whether or not you read it as romantic, although the look she gives him as he's walking away totally reads to me as smitten kitten, Ahura and Spock have one of the longest running associations in the franchise. They work together for 34 years. 
Now, I don't know what's coming in the future, even if I know what's coming in the future. Certainly, to praying in chapel are an issue, and we do know what happens in TOS. But I don't think we've heard the last about the connection between Uhura and Spock. These two are intrinsically tied to one another. And personally, I love the idea of Captain Uhura and Ambassador Spock, after 35 years of friendship, being able to find one another. But outside of all of that, just talking about Uhura and finding her place. Pike asks where Uhura is going to be in 10 years. She might not know, but we do. 10 years from now, she'll be animated and taking over command of the Enterprise to save all the guys. She might not have come into Starfleet with the same ambitions as everyone else, but she finds a home, a family, and a purpose. One Star Trek Picard tells us she'll continue doing until she retires at 100 years of age. And it all starts here. We've waited 56 years for this, and I don't think Strange New Worlds is going to waste the opportunity to tell us the whole story. This was another absolutely fantastic outing. This may legitimately be one of my favorite episodes of Star Trek. I've watched it three times fully just today, and another time in pieces to write this script, and I'm still in awe. I'm glad they have Spock have this connection with Uhura. But like I said last week, I'd like to explore some of the other characters. But such a good show. Strange New Worlds is already bucking to be my favorite series. So comment down below with your thoughts on Strange New Worlds, Children of the Comet. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me, please visit my Patreon. You can also buy me a coffee, or you can go to my Redbubble and TeePublic to buy my Greek graphic designs. So until next time, live long, and may the force be with you.